Warning. The following podcast contains nicotine, fat clouds, coarse language, and other adult shit. It is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Productions contacted me. Uh, I was amazed by your story. Um, I couldn't think of a better person to be getting into the CBD space than the pitch man, Anthony Sullivan. I mean, like we're trying to find good advocates for CBD who can talk about it and and actually have not just trying to profit or make some kind jump into a space that's growing rapidly, but like you have a genuine like reason for getting into this CBD world. Yeah, every day that goes by, I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Um, I was, I gotta be honest, when I, when I decided to jump into this with Dave, I was, uh, there was, I was concerned about it because there's so much misinformation around CBD and, and, um, and I, you know, I thought that, you know, not only was I getting into this for the right reason, but I, in the back of my mind, I was thinking maybe I could kind of, um, answer some of those unanswered questions. I, I don't like to use the word mainstream, but maybe help help the general public understand what CBD can do and, and maybe use some of my, you know, just some of my m marketing prowess, if mm. you will, and also my personal experience to to just share my story, nice. if you will, which is, uh, and it's a complete departure from anything I've ever done before. Uh, if, if you know me, which, yeah. you, you know, you kind of mentioned, mm -hmm. you know me from OxyClean, you, you know me from <laughs> right. selling steam mops, um, exactly. all of a sudden I've jumped into CBD. So it's uh, it's been a really, really interesting year. Yeah, it's the perfect leap. I like that. We, we call it like, CBD mystifying or CBD bunking, all those, a lot of really crappy, like scurrilous products that don't, aren't really doing what they claim or like the labels are messy. And, you know, it's, it's good to have people that are actual, like real players in the game that are coming in. You already know how to sell products. You already know what a good product is, how to test it, how to make sure it's quality before you bring it to market. So I'm excited that you're jumping into the space. Yeah, well, I'll give you a little backstory. It wasn't, I didn't actually kind of jump in. I, I really thought about it carefully. What basically happened was um, just over a year ago, my, my daughter, Devon, she's t she turns nine in a few days and um, she had some seizures and she had, was born with a rare genetic disorder. And she's had lots and lots of health issues throughout her, her short little life. She's great kid, super present, um, loves everybody, but she's had lots of medical issues. And, um, um, she got put on the anti-seizure medication and that medication was prescribed to her by a neurologist and I didn't even really think twice about it because you, you know you go to the doctor and whatever the doctor says you should take you take mm -hmm. uh, you know pharmaceuticals and then there's a, there's a place for all of these medications I really believe that but um anyway so she started to take this this anti-seizure medication and then over the a period of about two to three months she lost 20 percent of her body weight but the, th the thing that really got me was her, I, I noticed this dramatic shift in her personality. And she's really, really vibrant, present girl. She's a uh, present little girl. She doesn't talk like, uh, like we would talk to each other, but she communicates really well, word assimilations. And I took her on a rafting trip down Wikiwachi Springs. And I was, uh, there was a group of us, you know, together with my daughter. And she just had this, all of a sudden, I did not recognize my little girl, her personality, the personality that I knew was completely gone. And anyway, it was it was a really um, as a parent and any parent with a kid, you, you hate to see your, your kids suffer. Yeah. It's you know, it's bad enough on the short term. But this this all of a sudden I saw this vibrant little personality rip from my, my little girl. And I, I, I was sure it was linked to the medication. So I, I called up a mom and I, you know, suggested I said, look, we need to look at some some alternatives. Mm -hmm. This this medication is literally what was the medication? Kepra. Uh huh. She was on Kepra. Um, and, you know, I want to be careful when I just, I don't want to label Kepra as a, as a, as a bad pharmaceutical, right. but obviously it was having a very, very, the side effects of that particular drug for my little girl were, were, were really, really intense and negative. And um, 
So I reached out to her mom and her mom was the one who suggested, she says, well, you know, how about we go down the cannabis road? How about we go down the CBD road? Mm -hmm. And my initial reaction was as a, you know, misinformed person was, I don't know if I want my little girl to be baked. I don't, you know, I just, I, that was my knee jerk right. reaction. But anyway, you know, it took me about uh, over and I slept on it and I thought anything is better than what we're using right now. So we contacted mm -hmm. the neurologist and the neuro neurologist Long story short, didn't want to to take her off 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 the pharmaceutical, right. but we eventually prevailed as her parents. We had the right to 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 not back the dosage, and it took quite a long time to get her off it. What dose was she was she on initially? Oh, I can't remember uh, uh, the the Capra, but it was it was strong. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, and then we started experimenting with with CBD, and um, and it was uh, you know I was I was excited for the, the fact that there was a, a plant based alternative, you know, uh, to to this. This pharmaceutical, um, and about the same time, and I don't know why. If, if there's some, you know, the greater force at work here, <laughs> I found myself standing in the middle of a hemp field up in uh, Heinsberg <laughs> in Vermont, uh -huh. and I, I I just went up there with a buddy of mine, and um, and he invited me up, and um, I wasn't really paying that much attention. I thought I'd just go for a you know field trip up to right. Vermont. So I find myself standing in the middle of this uh, 25 acre hemp field, about 35,000 plants. And I remember like it clearly something happened to me in the middle of this field. I just right. stood there and as far as I could see, there was just these plants and it, it all kind of came together. I'm like, these are the plants that's making the CBD that my little girl has taken. And I, I just stopped and I paused and I, you know, I love what I do, love selling OxyClean, love the, the whole ad scene on TV business. And I thought, you know what, this is, I want to, I want to do this. I want to, I want to, I, I didn't want to just do it. I wanted to farm it. I'm like, right, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to learn how to farm this. Right. And that's when I, uh, I, I quickly realized that there was no way um, I could do this on my own. I've never farmed anything outside of some tomatoes in my backyard and mm -hmm. some broccoli and a <laughs> couple pumpkins. And that's where, uh, that's where I brought Dave in. And I, uh, I said, did a little bit of research and I'm like, I called Dave up and, uh, and I'm like, Dave, I, I, I got something I want you to come and see. Uh -huh. So yeah. I'm uh, not sure why he called me. I have no farming experience. Well, this either. is why I let you jump in, but you know, you can maybe explain um, because I, I, I'm our partnership has been fantastic. Our, our true north is to is to do something meaningful for for my daughter and also help other kids and people mm -hmm. around the world and and push out the the benefits of this product. But then uh, I brought Dave into the loop, and uh, all of a sudden we find ourselves on a, on a farm. And you can jump in. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Sully and I met about uh, most must be 17 years ago now. We um, we met through uh, an adventure race called the Eco Challenge, which is um, they just being revi uh, revitalized now. It'll be coming out on Amazon in 2020, hmm. um, which is an expedition race of so about 300 miles, and you bicycle and you you hike and climb and navigate the whole thing together. So we were teammates. Is it a reality show or something? It, it was filmed for USA Networks back in the you know. The, or the early 2000s um but it started out as it is a reality show it was one of mark burnett's first reality oh, shows cool. so from this you know the, the guys that were on the same tv crews that were on survivor and borneo the first episode of uh survivor came over to the other side of borneo and filmed the first episode of eco challenge nice and so nonetheless i'd done two of them and sully had seen uh, my team you know uh flail along the course in last place uh and was inspired to uh to to attempt the eco challenge on his own and so he reached out and we we got connected and and did a couple of uh of these expedition races together and became fast friends uh lost in the jungles of uh, a variety of different uh, lo locations across the world but um nonetheless so uh we we stayed friends uh for years after that the race and uh from time to time, he would call me up with uh, a business idea that he was that he thought we'd like to look into, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, four or five times I said, "No, this is you know, it's not for me, Sully. Good luck." But <laughs> this particular time, he called me and said uh, he sh sent me a text of him standing in a hemp field, and uh, if you've ever seen, uh, you know, you'll, you'll never see a farmer happier than the day before they start to harvest. So he was standing with his farmer and he and the farmer were ear to ear beaming <laughs> as happy as can be in a field of cannabis as That's far as great. you could see. It's just something magical about being in a giant open field of, uh, of cannabis. And so he invited me up to take a look at it. Uh, the next weekend we went up and I uh, he asked me to talk him out of it. And I, uh, <laughs> I had the same feeling as he did. I just thought this was something historic um 
to see an outdoor grow of cannabis that was legal uh, as far as we could see. Here on the East Coast, CBD over the last year has become very well known, but you know, last year it was sort of still a couple letters that people didn't know much mm -hmm. about. So it's really emerging now as, oh, yeah. uh, as a massive movement. And, and so nonetheless, we, uh, I told him I'd look into it. And uh, over that, that winter, this last winter, I, I, when I saw what they were doing um, in terms of growing, I thought it was amazing. But what I saw what they were doing in terms of drying I thought it was a disaster. They were really struggling to, to dry the plant quickly. It's hmm. a dense flower and they had spread it out over a Home Depot sized building all along the floor. And every day they were bringing in new fresh trees into the same room that was, you know, had been drying for 14 days. And I said, this is just messed up. You know, they're going to, this is, they're going to have a lot of mold in this building. Right, so, right. so I, I, uh, I come from, uh, I've done several, um, entrepreneurial uh, efforts in my day, uh, had four different companies that I've had some, some success with. And so I was familiar with the startup business, but um, my most recent business was a uh, commercial drying business where like a surf pro type business. Perfect fit though. Yeah, where, uh, <laughs> you know, I would chase storms and uh, you know, if a hurricane came through, I would see the hurricane come in a week out and you know, they get everyone so worked up that the hurricanes come in mm -hmm. and everyone goes and clears out the stores. Well they try to vacate and I would start driving in, you know, I would take my crews of guys and all my gear and start driving towards the hurricane because as soon as it pa the weather passed, you know, a roof would be ripped off of a hotel like this and, you know, 16 floors would be flooded oh, and I would yeah. go in and tear out, tear out the uh, wet materials and control the environment and dry out the building. So when I saw what they were doing with their hemp, in Vermont last year, I said, you know, this is, I can definitely do this part better mm -hmm. than what they're doing. Um, but you know, I have no idea about the farming. We're gonna have to find somebody to talk to about right. how we're gonna how we're gonna get these plants in the yeah, ground. Yeah, it was a strange call because as uh, you know, obviously I've got a fairly big rolled deck of people that I know. But I I I was looking for someone if they got their teeth into it. And my, I think my question to Dave was, um, listen, I need you to come up to Vermont and I want you to talk me out of doing this because I'm <laughs> doing this. And I think he knew right away. He said, "There's no way right. you can do this on your own. <laughs> like you need someone to to help you." And, and Dave Dave jumped right in, and he you know when he what he brought to our operation from a drawing perspective was fantastic and then um we we leaned on a, a couple guys up in vermont and um there was some there was some parameters that we wanted for our land but one of the things that was really really important to me if i was gonna get on board and, and become part of this business i didn't want to just and it would have been easy this would the easiest thing to do would be to go to a manufacturer white label it right put my name on it and, right. and put my cbd on the shelf and it'll be on the shelf already Right. It would already be out there. And I'd be one of a thousand people, celebrities, people who are just doing <laughs> it just for the money. I, I, and especially with my background in, say, you know, as seen on TV products, I think that would be the logical thing that people would expect me to do. And I, I thought, you know what, because of my, the heart space here, because of the reason I'm doing this, I don't want to do that. I want to actually farm it. And there's this whole romantic idea. Oh, I'm going to start a farm. Um, it was a, it was a, big departure from my comfort zone i'm like yeah. you know what if I, if we're gonna if we're gonna develop our own brand i want to buy a piece of land uh we'll figure it out together we'll figure out the soil we'll figure out the water we'll figure out um you know the 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 privacy we wanted the proximity to the local resources and we went at it from the ground up and i thought if, if we're going to do this i want to understand everything from buying the seeds uh, figuring out how to plant them, the the water wheels, laying the plastic, get or, getting organic certification. There was something about doing this expedition style yeah. and kind of leaving my old life behind for a little bit. Oh, that's so great. yeah, we we both uh, um, pretty much moved up to Vermont from what April, right? Or you you yeah. haven't been back. Well, um, yeah, it's <laughs> this is the first time back in civilization. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen him in, in a. I mean, look at him; he's all cleaned up. Yeah, we. We, when we started our, our, our land search, not long after our first trip up, we, we realized right, the first thing we wanted to do was find a piece of land. So we started looking for farms and farm, really good farmland is actually not that easy to come by because the farmers that have good farmland, when they you know, want to pass it on to the, the next generation or, or a neighbor typically will come and buy their land. Or, you know, so it's, it's through word of mouth that the best right. fan, the farmland uh, actually 
changes hands. So you know, can't go on Zillow and just buy you know best farm you can find, right? It's just not there. Um, so we started touring the state looking at different pieces of property and, and again we made a list of like a checklist of what we liked about the first farm that we saw and it was privacy security a water source um that was actively being farmed you know some of these things we had on our hit list mm -hmm. and it was difficult to find a piece of property but we stumbled upon a piece in plainfield vermont um without a structure on it there was no farmhouse but the land itself was picturesque and it was uh, actively being farmed by a couple of local uh, organic dairy farmers for feed and um what were they growing just something they to feed. were, they they were, were growing sorghum and and hay and mm -hmm. we we literally rolled up on the lads that were farming it and uh you know they had a, a, a uh, New Holland tractor and a shotgun in the back and we just roll up in his <laughs> truck and they kind of looked at us sideways and I don't think they wanted us you know we didn't even call the realtor but we found this little piece of property I may say little it was 116 acres it was on the side of a mountain um, and it had pretty much everything except a water source and a structure it was the right price we, we liked everything about it so um, we had a, a someone come up and, and kind of figure out where if we could get water and the well driller said we will hit water uh -huh. it just it might it might be at 60 feet or 600 feet says, it is down there someone gets some has seen on tv dowsing rods no, we, did. we did the guy came <laughs> they, out they, with, they had with the, the dowsing rods it the was funny crazy thing is dave and i actually picked where we wanted to put the well and that was kind of our, my first little sign we, we've i think we've had our angels looking over over us this year because we've we've had some some episodes that we should not have been able to go through but um they came up with the water witching sticks and uh -huh. they found it and they dug it and we hit water at 60 feet that's great and yep. dave called me it was still still snow on the ground and that was the first sign like right we got water we had about 200 gallons a minute at one point we did it was it was crazy amount of water uh we did it in the snow um again we thought we would have we didn't know if we were gonna have to drill for you know a thousand feet or or a hundred feet, but we were at the top of the mountain. We just thought this was the spot to put it because it was centrally located on the farm and at the top. And if we had to pump, we could pump downhill. Right. So if we had to drill a little water further, runs down. Easier, water, we we of these are the things we knew. <laughs> yeah, these are some <laughs> right. of the skills we brought with us uh -huh. to this whole operation. But the, uh, the, the 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 funny thing was, we there was no structures on the farm. We you know we kind of made this requisition list of things that we thought we needed like we know we know we need greenhouses we know mm. we need a couple of rvs we need a couple generators we're gonna need some trays we're gonna need some dirt right. we're gonna need you know and somewhere to sleep maybe we, we, well we got up there <laughs> let me tell you this spring and we picked the wettest winter i think in recorded wettest spring in recorded history to to start and the mm. locals in the village plainfield that they would drive by and i could just see them from their cars shaking their heads like <laughs> these, these yahoos are right, never right. gonna make it uh-huh um, and I think that's just kind of yeah, sure. strengthened our resolve a little bit. And, you know, we got stuck in. We got a couple of local guys to help us. We brought up our grower from Philadelphia. We uh, got a couple local guys from Vermont just to kind of say, listen, we're, we're doing this. And there was a couple of times when I thought everyone was going to quit. I thought they, these guys are going to quit. But in the back of my mind, I think with Dave, I'm like, listen, we're doing this for the right reason. You know, he's, he's leaving his family temporarily. I'm kind of putting my production company over here to, to do this and we, we, we're on the expedition and yeah. we're going to make it to the top and it's going to suck, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just a blizzard. We'll get through it. The weather will, you know, the, the weather will subside. And, um, and it was a, it was a hell of a year, but I think the, one of the things that I'm really excited about is in all this, um, I had a TV show 10 years ago on Discovery Channel called Pitchman. Pitch yeah, I remember Pitchman. Yep. Yeah, Billy Mays. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Mays here. Um, yeah, we can't leave here without talking about that. And sure, that no bit. problem at all. Be happy we'll to. We'll double back to that. Yeah, but I um, I still had a lot of my relationships with um, the guys from Pitchman, and, and Tom Beers was the creator of, of Pitchman. Mm -hmm. um, he did the voiceover too, right? Yep, he did the voiceover, and of course, Deadliest Catch and Ice Road Truckers. So I, I said to Dave, I said, we have to film this. Like whether we succeed or fail, we have to at least like film this. That's so good. yeah, he said that to me the first time I came up. Actually, we when we walked into that Home Depot sized building, and it was just you know uh, if you've ever witnessed uh, an outdoor grow hemp harvest, it is a sight to behold. It's like mayhem. We uh, haven't been to one yet. Well, we'd love to host oh, you. You'd have to come up next, totally next fall. Come, yeah. You guys yeah. have to check it out. It's just crazy. It's beautiful and crazy and chaos all at the same time. And it lasts for at least a month. For us, it was about a month, maybe six weeks. But um, when we were witnessing it last year, 
you know, we were like, this is absolute insanity. It's just crazy. <laughs> um, this is made for television, like the just the drama, the chaos, the high stakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, this is, you know, we, we got to film it. And so I was actually initially pretty reluctant. I was like, buddy, this is going to be hard enough as it is. Like, this is a hard, like, this is a, right. you're, this is a tall yeah, more order. reason to film it. This yeah, a, right. This is a tall With The whole order. crew, like, babysitting yeah. them as <laughs> yeah. a slug. Oh, the well, it was, it, to start with, we didn't have a big budget for the film crew. So I just called one of my old friends in LA and I was like, bring a camera and, and bring a <laughs> microphone. And we'll just start filming, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it was, uh, I, I don't know how much footage we got of the early days, but I mean, it was brutal. The only right. thing that would have made it worse is if we were getting shot at. Mm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> breakthrough moments i remember once we started seeding once the greenhouse the first greenhouse was up and we actually had a structure with some shelter and we got our trays and we filled them up with the dirt and we seeded that was when i knew we were off to the races because the whole entire crop came in in the size of four soda cans you know it, was, it right. was the strangest thing going out and spending 60 70 grand on these four soda cans seedlings. on right. these little tiny seeds oh. and, and then they were just sitting in the back of dave's truck i'm like don't get arrested <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true and you know i think i i was worried um i'll be completely candid i was worried how um you know people i work with in my everyday life would would respond to me you know leaving my kind of relatively safe world if you will of being the oxyclean guy right and all of a sudden jumping into this space which is very very misunderstood sure. into the cbd world and and i wanted to educate myself really quickly about wellness not 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 stoners and the below 0.3 right. percent thc and so i kind of went on the crash course of education but i think one of the things i'm really happy with and it's it's nice to sit here in the in the hotel with new york city <laughs> in the background I, I think what it's done is for the two of us i don't think there are many people who have struggled through the actual farming process they just white labeled it go buy some right. isolate put it in a product put your name on it and hope for the best um even I, even actual farmers i mean most of the farmers that that I'm, i've met in vermont they have a structure, they have a farmhouse, they have, you know, a generational greenhouse that's been built, you know, for us, it was every single thing we needed. Starting from just a patch of dirt, pretty uh, much. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we had a couple guys in Vermont that helped us out and I'm so grateful Neighbors. for everything they, 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 you know, and they told us this is the track, you need a 70 horsepower tractor and you need a tiller the bush hog or whatever it is and then we quickly find out that the, the property grows rocks we pulled out rocks the size of small cars oh wow uh, that's how big the, um, you know but luckily our neighbor lloyd uh, the shout out to our neighbor lloyd who he's got some heavy construction equipment he would come up and help us but um we we uh, learned so much by doing it i mean we laid 55 miles of drip irrigation we dug our own well uh, we fertigated, we, we dug a 2 million uh, gallon retention pond. Wow. We put in our, our own structures. We ripped, we put new roads in. Um, we were we were grossly undergunned when it came to equipment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we thought we had enough equipment and neither of us could even have driven a tractor before. I mean, it took mm -hmm. us, the tractor got delivered to our neighbor's house and we go over to pick it up. It took us about four hours to uh, figure out how to, how to, how to even drive move it. it. We don't want to ask him, how do, you, how do you drive the tractor? Because it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Does it take keys? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's got it. The, the shift is on the, on the gears. Anyway, it's all once you figure it out, like anything. Right. Once you figure it out. But I think doing it the hard way and uh has has given us an appreciation for the plant an appreciation for the process and um i'm really excited uh for where we're going next with with what we you know the genetics that we've done and how mm -hmm. we how we've taken it out of the ground and um and the uh, products you know, that we're making I think, I think we were prepared i like to think you know we're that, not prepared he's <laughs> this is he's off he's no off you were prepared for the <laughs> harvest buddy you you prepared you you were, well, i don't think we were prepared so much for some of the things that hit us but one thing i know now i can say we were prepared for the harvest you would you were not going to let us fail at the harvest we built this epic drying system that i think might be the biggest on the eastern seaboard that he he developed i give him a of lot course, of credit because yeah. he's from the you know evacuation and uh, of relative humidity and positive pressure and hydroscopic <laughs> content of, and uh he knows uh, that back he, and forth. Well, I, I got it down now as well. Now. I'm an expert in drawing. <laughs> he knows some it's of the been, words. Uh -huh. It's been a it's been a great uh, year, and I think even in the even in our darkest moments, when you know it was terrifying, when we laid one row of plastic and looked at each other and like 
Took about three hours. There's no way. <laughs> no way we're going to get these in the ground. Right. And we're we had need a couple. Some help. We look, but, you know, a lot of it was just we had to go and get the right equipment. Right. And it's amazing when, you know, if you need the right tools for the right job in this. And we, we didn't know. And I even think because hemp is relatively a relatively new plant, the, the, the infrastructure and the, the know how doesn't really exist. It's not like not in this country. No, it, it, it doesn't exist. No. Got to so, go to China. To, yeah, for sure. Growing it for like ten thousand. Yeah, years but we were and, able to get an organic certification, which we were really excited about. Um, and we've had a. Uh, I'm I'm still a little shell shocked. I'm still assimilating back to civilization. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll bet. Yeah. Uh, look, going back a little bit to when you first were standing in that hemp field. Like I was thinking about, that's like one of those moments of clarity that you have in your life. You know what I mean? Like you're standing there, like I've had a couple of them mm -hmm. just randomly where it's just like, wow, something you feel that, that like, this is something I have to do. Like, it's almost like a, a, a big choice moment where like my whole life can go a different path if I take this choice or I can just take the easy route. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And th it seems like you were, you were weighing your, uh, you know, you called him, you're like, mm -hmm. come on, help me make this choice. And that little nudge got you in that, you know, to, to basically take your life in a totally new direction. Yeah, I, I think I honestly had an out-of-body experience. <laughs> I That's really how did. it feels. And I, I, I hadn't drank anything and I hadn't smoked anything. <laughs> I was you know, in, in a complete moment of serenity oh, and yeah. surprise, just sitting in the middle of this field and thinking about how beautiful it was and how peaceful and how I use the word magical a lot. And also in the back of my mind or front of my mind is this is, this is the plant that is providing the medicine that is benefiting my daughter. And I'm just like mm -hmm. that. And then I'm thinking, okay, I can sell this. Yeah. Like if I do this oh, yeah. right. And I am, I, I thought to myself, if I don't do this right, I'm never going to get taken seriously. That's true. It's just going to be like, oh, the OxyClean guy slaps his name on a bottle of CBD. You're putting your whole brand on the line. I was like, really? I, I, have to, I have to go all in yeah. and, and set sail solo, or not solo, two of us, and we have to summit you know, together. But um, I think this is, this is something that I really, really wanted to understand. And it's funny, I've been like doing some, been, a lot of people have been asking me questions. And I, I think sometimes about the story of OxyClean. Like OxyClean, when it started out, no one knew what it was. It was mm -hmm. this white powder that you put down and make stains disappear. Right. And we went up against we went up against some of the biggest brands with OxyClean. Um, and Billy was the spokesperson, mm -hmm. and I was behind the scenes, you know, helping helping the, with the marketing, like producing it. And, and it stuff. sort of just reminded me of that same sort of energy when you're at a point when there's something that big is going to happen, and now you look at the size of OxyClean, right? It's almost a billion dollars in sales right. a year, but. Um, and it, you know, it's uh, it was the little stain remover at the time, twenty years ago, that no one really heard of, and it got a cult following, and now everyone knows about it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, uh, and I, I feel like what what I wanted to do with this is a very similar kind of journey. Um, but whenever I've really got behind something, I wanted to get my teeth into it and really understand it from the ground up. And that meant this year. I mean, I have to be honest. I have a nice house in Florida. I have a twenty-two thousand square foot. I really? got a boat. I have a. I have a nice. Sure. I'm. I did not need to go live in an airstream on top of a mountain. Exactly. Slogging through mud. But it was great. I got to tell you, I couldn't wait. I, I obviously was juggling two or three jobs this year, and I was Dave. I'm very fortunate, and thank you. I'll go on the record. Thank you for, <laughs> for putting pleasure. in the time. Dave put in more hours on the farm than anyone. Um, but it was. I couldn't wait. When I was down in Florida working on my marketing and everything, I couldn't wait on weekends. And if I got a week off when I could, I was sure. up there. And uh, I loved, I mean, this is, this will sound crazy. I love picking the rocks. I love the weed whacking. I could ride the water wheel all day long. I would, could spend all day planting <laughs> with my little finger. Um, there, was, there was something very therapeutic about it. And um, what's the old saying? There's, uh, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. I fell out of my comfort zone most of and I, I still do. I still mm -hmm. feel like I'm learning. I have not mastered this. This it's year one space. Yes, it's year, year one. one. You know. So I'm, I. It's it's really exciting to be um, in it in in the mix. And I feel like this was the year to go. Um, if we didn't, if we hadn't have gone this year, I I think next year is going to be a, a much different landscape. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's moving quickly. So I'm happy we we pulled. You got to get on that wave while it's cresting up, and mm -hmm. you're going to be there. Yeah, I I I. I I'm curious to see where the business goes. I, you know, I, listen. It's exploding. There's, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of unknowns, but mm -hmm. in that there's a, there's a lot of excitement. So I think 
the way we did it, the timing was right. You said moment of clarity. I, I did. It's, I've used that expression a lot. I had a moment of clarity. We probably invited maybe 50 people up to the farm this year, not one of them. All of them, they, we take them, we had a tour that we'd start to do. It was, you know, like the backstage, you know, uh -huh. Universal Studios tour. We'd start off at the greenhouses and then we'd go up the roads and we'd, we'd drop people off. We call it Camp Kush at the top of the hill. Okay. And there's normally about five minutes of complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> the, whoever it was would uh -huh. stand up there and just say nothing. And Dave and I would just kind of wow. disappear. Yeah. And the next thing out of their mouth would be, wow. Yeah, I did not see it like this. <laughs> it has it has an effect on people, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even Tom, when Tom, we had Tom Beers come up, the ex uh, executive producer of Deadliest Catch. He came up, and at that time, we had just had Sully's uh, Airstream was parked in the middle of Braunton, our largest field. All of our fields are named after towns in uh, in England that Sully's uh, from his hometown, but uh, our his his airstream was parked in the center of our largest field and it was empty at the time and i remember tom turning to sully and say, saying uh, after just uh, like uh, five minutes of silence after his tour he was like this is ambitious <laughs> 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 it was most definitely an ambitious project and it's it's hard to really re convey the scale of it through a few photos you know and the same thing with that like that original uh, hemp field that we walked into the picture you know it's impressive you know you see like these big giant cannabis plants but being in that field the the it's a magical feeling really to be and it may be that what, like what you're saying the terpenes and mm -hmm. just the the sensory overload of the visual yeah. with the you know the aroma and everything all at the same time and the beauty of it is like the first time you went there that's the first time you're getting that all encompassing feeling so like you could almost it's almost like you saw what the future was going to be you're like i'm going to be in my own field Mm -hmm. smelling this experiencing this and then it's almost like high-fiving yourself through a magical mm -hmm. like invisible portal like high-fiving your future self and now you're in your own field like slapping back being like yeah yeah it happened we yeah, did it. we I, did the hard work it was i've had people come up and devon's mom came up in particular it was a very that was a really special day because uh devon came up to the farm and That's i think great. even our, our toughest day you know to have my daughter running around the fields and you know uh, her mom took her shoes off and is running around barefoot That's like awesome. and, earthing and having you know um people th there's something magical about it i'm not quite sure what it is and i think we we have this we have this beautiful property on the side of a mountain um we we named our brand mont kush mont was which is there's another almost serendipitous uh thing that happened with the name so actually dave kind of came up with the name mont kush and mont is a <laughs> shout out to mountain obviously french uh -huh. mountain and vermont green mountain state and montpellier is only about five or six miles away from my farm Makes sense. and kush was you know i was a little i'm like oh, kush is a little edgy but we'll, <laughs> we'll go with it because um you know no one is a great trademark anyway we had a friend of ours come up who speaks fluent hindi and he's he's very excited about the name uh -huh. he said this is the best name the best name and I am like, well, why is the name so good? He says, Kush in Hindi literally translates to happy. Oh, so nice. I'm like, happy mountain, which we didn't know that going mm. into it. So, and, and our logo <laughs> is of Camel's Hump Mountain, which is a very iconic uh, mountain in the state of Vermont. So even the fact that we named Mont Kush, it translates itself in, into to happy mountain. Cool. Yeah. Um, we actually just got a fish for our, we have a, a segment called the Cannabis Diet where we do uh, CBD cooking. And we have a little beta fish and we call him Kush. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know that. Now he's yeah. like, yeah. he's happy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's not K-U-S-H. I think it's K-U. It's, it's phonetically K, like but yeah, phonetically the same. But yeah, happy mountain. But of mountain. course, That's you know, cool. the, the Hindu Kush mountains are where most of the genetics, you know, originated from over in between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Hmm. And so that's where most of the Indica strain is, has originated from. And so when you see... Uh, what, what strains are you guys going to be growing there or have you grown so far? We're working on some of it. This year we're partnering up. We would love to do our own genetics, to, to breed our own genetics, but obviously that's going to take a little time. But we, uh, we grew we've looked at everything. We grew Lifter, Hawaiian. Um, um, we've done the Oregon CBD, you know, strains. Um, there's, we've looked at uh, about 20 different strains in the wild in Vermont. You know, uh, we've done, looked at Cherry Blossom, Cherry Wine, uh, Remedy, um, Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels. <laughs> Trump. Uh, now, did you know that Trump wasn't his name? Not as T R M P. 
was the, and then it got acronymed into Trump. It's now, and now I think Stormy it's just Daniels T1, right? Got on top. I don't know what yeah. it is, but we uh, it was funny. We saw some some plants that were huge plants with the flower. It wasn't every every genetic seemed to react. You know, you'd have a slight variance mm -hmm. in the in the flower or the size of the plant. But um, we had a hundred percent germination. We wow. we seeded by hand. We used the water wheel. We used plastic. We irrigated and fertigated. Um, and we we had a very for first time rookies. We had very little plant loss and uh, it's true. zero How many theft. acres. Did you did you? We see did about fifty one acres registered uh, with the agency of agriculture as certified organic, and so about seventy five thousand plants. Um, wow which Good is uh, impressive uh, to see all in, you know, uh, throughout our nine meadows on our, on our farm. But we're right now, um, we're in the same boat as, as every, all the rest of the hemp farmers in the country as we're waiting for, you know, guidance on the, from the USDA and from uh, the Department of Agriculture on how they're gonna come down on uh, the CBD, the THC content in the seeds. Um, so we're all at the mercy of uh, the genetics that were sold. And, you know, I think some states are looking at, you know, ruling on 0.3% total THC mm -hmm. versus the Delta 9. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out, because I think it's going to be very difficult for farmers out there to keep their plants below 0.3% total THC. Right. Um, Unless you isolate it, you know, which well, look, is not a way you don't really want to go. Like yeah. We agree. We looked at all the extraction methods and we're going down uh, a road that we think is going to really uh, solventless extraction. Um, and we're taking our time. Um, one of the reasons I want to take my time is I, the product that we want to bring to market. I want it to be the absolute best. Mm. If it was in the, the wine category, I want it to right. win a, you know, right out of the gate. Right. right. And start and, winning high times awards. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I Old feel, I cannabis feel. Cannabis cups. I, That's right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not worried. I mean, it doesn't, but I do feel like the CBD is a lot more than the isolate. And yeah. the isolate is the go-to and it's the easy, it's the path of least resistance. But I do feel that there are a lot better ways to extract the CBD that I know you, you know about. And we're, we, we're, we've looked at all types of extraction and um, we're excited about, about developing some, some products now, teaming up with, with different people and uh, looking at pushing them some products out. We're super excited to go to MJ BizCon um, mm -hmm. that's coming up. And, what are uh, you extracting it with? You said solvent, solventless? We are, we're looking at all the different extraction methods, but we are uh, in love with the solventless extraction. To, to be honest. It's just what we're trying to do now is scale it. It's very difficult to do solventless extraction at scale, but we think we can do it and we have time to do it. We actually purchased this summer. We realized at mid, mid heart or actually at about mid July that we did actually need a structure. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to do all this. <laughs> off. 50 acres. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we actually, um, we actually were able to purchase a, an ice factory in the town of Plainfield. Believe it or not, the town of Plainfield, population 1,200, doesn't have that much. There's a, there's a pizza joint called the Positive Pie, which, <laughs> Carlo, we love you. Thank you for feeding us this summer. There's a co-op. There's a gas station. There's mm. a, a law office and a yoga studio and a, a grow shop and a couple other things there. But there actually happened to be an ice factory that was for sale. So we, we purchased a 10,000 square foot facility nice. um, waterfront on the Winooski River. <laughs> and it so happens because it's an ice making factory, it also has frozen storage. So we were able to get our, our crop out of the ground. Um, after what we saw last year with the, some of the carnage that other farmers had experienced and, and the weather in Vermont is not like growing in California or, or, uh, or Colorado when it's just the relative humidity is higher, right? right? So you can kind of let mother nature do its thing when it comes to drying. Yeah. We're not afforded that luxury up in Vermont and right. I think anywhere in the Northeast. So Dave's drying system that he engineered really, um, we, we over-engineered it, I'm glad we did, but we were able to get everything out of the ground swiftly um we it was almost like a military operation all we needed is a couple hueys and uh mm -hmm. guys running around in uniform mm -hmm. with uh and it would have looked like we were taking over yeah. a small country I just think how slick it'll be in two years too you know oh. like this is the first rule. yeah we learned Everything's a lot hard we learned a lot time. we have high cbg in our uh in our genetics we have uh you know very low thc and uh super high cbd and so um, we wanted to try to preserve all those trichomes and all the terpenes as much as possible through all of our processing as much as you can with 75,000 plants all coming out of the ground at the same time. Right. 
And we believe that, you know, by preserving as much of that as possible, as much of what comes out of the ground as nature grow as it grows in nature and putting that into a bottle with, with a product um, that that customers are going to see the difference and they're oh, going to yeah. feel I'm, the difference. I'm I think, you know, my my goal, and I think Dave will, will be right there with me, is that the, the, my first customer is going to be, you know, obviously we'll, we'll be the, the guinea pigs, Dave and I, but it's my <laughs> daughter. Um, yeah. And I want to be able to hand her and her mom and, you know, the, uh, the, the people that help Devon and say, listen, this is, this is it. This is legit. You're not going to get any better. Um, so that we're, we're not quite there yet, but I'm really close. How really, amazing really is that? close. Mm. Oh, I'm, I cannot... You know, and I know there's, I'm sure that I'm going to get some static from the pharmaceutical industry. Who is Anthony Sullivan? Who does he think he is? The OxyClean guy. And now all of a sudden he's a doctor and he <laughs> thinks this. But I feel like the conversation needs to be had. Oh, I, yeah. I love guys like Sanjay Gupta getting out there. Um, I, it, it disappointed me yesterday. I can't mention the network, but it was a, a TV show that I've been on several times. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned, I said, hey, let's come on and have a, a, a conversation about CBD. The network won't allow it. Oh, um, wow. And I just think that the, with people like myself getting in for the right reason, yeah, you know, farming it, hopefully will open that conversation up. And mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, people want to ask me about dosage and safe amounts. So I'm going to say, look, it, everyone's going to react to Advil will work differently for all three of us here. Yeah. Um, different people respond differently to different chemicals and, and, and whatever you want to put into your body. But what I would love is, is sensible regulation. Um, I would love to have some sort of standardization. Um, and I, I, I would lo love that my goal here would be, you know, five or six years from now to proudly say, yeah, I was part of the movement that helped destigmatize this plant. I was riding my, I do a lot of road riding. I was riding with um, actually George Hincapie. Uh, who used to ride with Lance Armstrong hmm. and we were riding through a, a, a close to Greenville a couple of weeks ago and we rode past a hemp field and I'm with about 30 or 40 people in the group and uh -huh. everyone's talking about getting stoned and I, I'm like really and these are all pretty affluent educated people that's great. you know the average price of the bike is probably these are these are smart mm. people but they smell that waft of hemp or weed and they just think oh you know they're they're growing weed to get stoned and I'm, I'm like no it's it's hemp it's industrial hemp it's below 0.3 percent THC but there's a, there's an amazing uh, amount of people um, that I think is kind of sad that still really can't differentiate between the 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 getting high. Uh, component of this and and the wellness component. I mean, and I I've even even back in the UK, I was just at, back over. Uh, my father passed away recently, and I'm I was sorry uh, about that. it's it's uh, thank you. But I you know people are asking me you know so you you know you in this hemp farming and people are, you know looking at me like I'm like I'm a drug dealer or something. Right. <laughs> just hasn't like, hit no. England as much yet. Um, CBD hasn't. No, it's still very, very regulated. Um, mm. I did see one shop that had a couple of the major brands in it that you would know, but um, nowhere is. I don't know if it would grow so well in England because they don't like wet feet and it mm. rains a lot in England. <laughs> so, um, but I, it's. I mean, it's coming. It, right. It's coming like a freight train, and I think the uh, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want it around, right? And I, the follow the money. I think it's going to be a while before. Um, government and, and the states get their head around it but i i one of the things i'm 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 very excited about is that we can tell the story and, and also kind of get dispel the myth about the plant but also I, i'd like people to know the difference between gas station cbd for lack of a better yeah, no word there, there's a lot of it's it's terrible yeah and i i want to be uh shout from the rooftops about this and like check your source check your coas mm. check check where you're getting it from check the authenticity check exactly. you know just check check you know um, so much spice and things like that on the gas station ones, yeah. like synthetic <laughs> thc yeah, to make you feel like you're getting high right and then then when people try real cbd they they think that's bogus because they've been getting high on this fake gas station crap you right know what i mean right it's really yeah, it's ridiculous. That's one of those things that has it will change, you know, like they will crack. It's down coming. It. Yeah, it's definitely coming. Well, I think one of the thing I mean, I've luckily because of the industry I'm in, we have always been very, very careful about the claims that you can make. You can't start making claims like curing this and solving right. this. We have to be careful. So, I mean, I can only talk from my personal experience, but um, as as the sensible legislation, I'm not a fan of legislating everything, but sensible Legislation, I think, is good for this. There's, there's more than anecdotal evidence that this, this, you know, 
that can help so many people oh, on yeah. so many levels. And I just more studies, um, more sensible regulation. We I had a we had a politician visit the. Uh, I won't mention his name, but we had a, a fairly prominent politician from the state of New Jersey who, uh, and I, I was kind of shocked about how he he really understood. When he came and visited the farm and mm -hmm. saw what we were doing and saw the jobs we were creating uh -huh. and how hard we were working and, and what we were doing this for and really educated himself about the plant, we flipped him completely. That's great. He, he was up there mm -hmm. for two or three days. He said, I can't believe what you guys are doing. This is great. I mean, we've, we've witnessed firsthand up in Vermont um, the opioid epidemic face to face. I mean, it is it is decimated a segment of the population up in, up in Vermont. Oh yeah, and it it seems Dave uses this analogy. You know, it's completely fine for someone to go snowboarding in Stow, they break their arm, they go to the ER, they get prescribed oxycodone sure. for for you know a couple of weeks, and and a year later they're living in an, under a bridge in a box Seriously. shooting up heroin. You know, yeah. and, but that's it's okay. Terrible. You yeah. know that that's that we can allow that. Um, yet. Yeah, all of a sudden CBD is is not in a, a cat category, so yeah. it's we're it's coming it's on, crazy. On plants over pills, plants over pills, and and uh, I, I think it's uh, we're we're at a moment in time. And you're talking about being like a you want to be sort of an educator for these people, like you, the way you educated all those bike riders in one <laughs> second, just telling them about it. That's all it takes. Sometimes it's just like a little bit of education. I think one of the best. Uh, ways to convince someone is someone's got an achy knee and it's yeah. like here try just rub this on don't even tell them what it is yeah. and then they're like wow that's a great what, what is that yeah that it's like so quick to no convince doubt someone. it's the it's the personal stories it's why cbd is taking root and just spreading like wildfire across the country it's the personal stories the personal success stories and so many people have come up to us i've never been in a business in my life where people have come up to me and thanked me. Like so many people have come up to us as farmers. They don't know us as anything other than that. Mm -hmm. Just stopping by, they know they heard we were the local, uh, a local hemp farm, a new local hemp farm. Thank you so much. Oh, my, my wife struggles with nausea. She's been, you know, she doesn't like to smoke weed because it, me it messes her up during the work day. Right. And now she's smoking CBD and it's completely changed her life. Or my, you know, some, my grandfather's, you know, got this or that. They all have, there's so many different personal stories and it's oh, so yeah. hard to combat that. That, that that truth and people say oh it's anecdotal it's uh there's no proven science well it's for us it's been real people and real stories word of have, mouth between friends like my both my parents just turned 70 this past weekend i went to visit them and they had a big card game and it's all people their age and i was in on the game and i had this cup that says cbd on it mm. and uh they're like oh you you try cbd and i'm like yeah you want to like i had some ointments or whatever mm. And they just started passing it around and yeah. everyone had stories. Yeah. They all had a friend who has lupus. They have a friend who has cancer. They have a, like who all have used CBD and benefit. It's like, wow, this is insane. You know, I don't even have to sell you guys because mm. you guys already know. Yeah. 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 You know, like that. Well, community. What I think is so like exciting about this like new frontier is that the science is going to come and support this. It, there's going to be the, the clinical trials are going to the blind studies are going to come and there's going to be not, it's not going to cure everything. But there's going to be proven evidence that's going to come out in the next few years as they as everyone gets access to the plant and is able to test it you're going to see that it's going to be supported we don't you don't need to be a scientist to know that if you smoke cannabis you your appetite is increased all mm -hmm. of a sudden you may want to eat pickles and ice cream at the same time right, right. Well, that fixes yeah. nausea right so then people that have that struggle with nausea can 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 take cbd and it can help them, you know, increase their appetite and so that they can function throughout the day. Um, there's there's so many different things that you just know you don't need necessarily to have a scientist tell you to prove it. But the, the science will come and it'll, it'll prove it. It's just going to take some time for the people to get their hands sure. around it, the, the real professionals to test it out. But in the meantime, there's so many stories of people that are that are experiencing success with it. it to me, that the science is unnecessary. It, I have, a, I have a kind of a personal story from my own life, and it, this is why your story resonated with me. I hope I don't fucking cry on camera. That's but, right. Like, I've done plenty of crying. So like, yeah, like um, 11 days before we launched this podcast, we launched it on 420. My girlfriend had a stroke, a pretty bad one, and uh, like her whole left side. And then when she was in the hospital uh, for that, <laughs> uh, they found out she had cancer too. And it was like two big things. Jeez. And uh, so she's been she gone she went through chemo now lost all her hair and everything um and i haven't mentioned this on the air yet but like in july she had a seizure a grand mal seizure 
and like if she was on CBD, that might not have happened. But we didn't. She wasn't on on that because she also had blood clots in her lung. So like she had been on blood thinner. So I couldn't. I have all the CBD in the world with this podcast, and I couldn't give her any because like there's certain things that like CBD will block. You know, like if you're on blood thinners and things like that, uh, it'll fuck it up a little bit. Mm. So. Um, all this time, couldn't give her CBD. She had these seizures, and now she's on Keppra. And like when I saw that, when I saw that Daily Mail article about you, and I was like, oh, she's like a zombie. You know, your daughter was like a zombie. Like ever since she started the Keppra, she's been a little bit. You know, I don't, it, I don't know if it's that or not, but she's been sort of like not totally herself. Uh, and I can't wait until like she's off these blood thinners and can start using CBD because it's like I know what's at the end of this tunnel you know what I mean mm-hmm. and like and I saw when I read that and your daughter like changed and, and like completely flipped it's like oh my god I'll get my girlfriend back you know what I mean it's really mm-hmm. it's really was a positive thing for me I'm like I've got to meet this guy I want to talk about well, it I, my daughter story I remember like I've, I've got to the point now and I can talk about it without tearing up okay. but I got to a point I couldn't talk about it because she literally I remember being on a, a, one of those two two-seater little kayaks going down wiki springs and i could not calm her down and i i literally was like i do not know my daughter wow. she was uh, her, her skin tone was gone she lost 20 percent. she's a pretty small kid you know 20 mm-hmm. percent of her body weight i mean dave loses 20 yeah. percent look fine but, <laughs> uh, but, my, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but she um and I, I remember ha- having a conversation with her all everyone who she has an army of people and i said i am willing to quit my job and and do nothing and buy a small little house and be there for her every time i would rather her not be on kepra and 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 catch her every time she she had an episode um um then then watch her suffer under this medication i still listen there's a there's a place for for these pharmaceuticals i really do and i i don't want everyone just go um and it's a it's a power some of these anti-seizure medications are, are very powerful and and it's not something i would ever wean anyone off lightly but my personal experience with with my daughter is um has been fantastic and can i put it all down to cbd uh, you know i i don't know i'd have the study the studies would have to be done was it a british neuro- neurologist that helped you with it no like, no it was, uh, it was in the u.s it was in florida okay. and um technically um she's still on it the doctor wouldn't um wouldn't unwrite the prescription right. no because i think uh, the doctor was afraid of liability which i also under- understand too but i feel like we do live in this society now where the you know the 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 answer is take some more pills take yeah. some more pills how can we throw it, medicine on this yeah right, and i right. look i still think you know diet and exercise nutrition you know work life balance but um you know i always i think with what i know now is like at least explore the options that are available to you before you just go in and start you know pounding pharmaceuticals for this at least try see what works for you, you can yeah. always change it one of the things i, I always felt with devon was it doesn't have to be permanent. We'll try this, and if it doesn't work, we'll try something else, and we'll keep trying things until we find, we'll try everything we, we possibly can. And um, and so far, so good. And I, <laughs> I wanted to, you know, that was, she was my inspiration to do this. Um, and uh, I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to give uh, uh, the tincture. Uh. I actually have the tincture, I'm on the, and like on the brink right now. I mm. wanna, we did our first, uh, first couple of tinctures, and uh, I think that they're, they're unbelievable. That's awesome. So mm-hmm. we're going to name it for Devon. That was the, the very first one we're going to do. But same same story. Yeah. Same story you have. And I, I hear you getting choked up. It's yeah. hard to watch. You know, I hear people with our friend Ethan um, mm-hmm. suffered tremendous. He had a, a fist, fist fight with cancer and came out the other side. But he's a, he's a big advocate and he's on board with us. Use it for anxiety. Yeah, you know. I got my my big wave surfer friend Andrew Cotton Cotty. Uh, he, he broke his back out in Nazari surfing like eighty foot waves with Garrett McNamara. Oh, hook us up. We we have a whole sports oh, section. We like check to- out Cotty, man. <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah. see someone who takes a beating? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to be on the forefront of this. It really is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we actually had a a guest on our fourth episode named Jean who. She's in her 70s or 80s, and she she was having 33 seizures an hour in her sleep. She was having seizures every day, and she was on so many meds. And it wasn't until she started CBD that the seizures just went away, like completely. She went from like 33 seizures an hour when she was sleeping during sleep studies to none. And it was it was, she couldn't believe it. I met her a month after she started taking CBD at a like a, a CBD seminar. And she was just she was in the audience just telling the per, the person who was speaking her story. And I was like, this is amazing. I got to talk to you. Right, you know? right. um, in the time between I talked to her there and when I actually interviewed her, she had switched CBD med- uh, medicine to a different dose. And like it was uh, the bottle had like 
it was hard for her to read, so she didn't have the exact right dose. So the day before I interviewed her, she had taken less than she normally took, and her seizures came right back. Jeez. Like, she, she had the right level, switched CBDs, and didn't have enough of those cannabinoids in her system. Right. Seizures right back, took more, they went away again, gone. Like, like it never happened. That's That, to me, is like, wow. Yeah. This is really... Well, that's, you know, that's what's so exciting about the... the the, the progress that's being made with the cannabis plant, right? You can now dose yourself by the exact milligram that works for you, right? Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, in the old days, everyone's experience with, with, with cannabis is you'd get a, a bag of weed from your, your dealer, right? And you, I would smoke it. I'd want to go lay on a couch and fall asleep. You, my and one of my buddies would smoke it it would bring out his personality and he could smoke that for all night long yeah. keep on smoking right so the point is that these di that each one of our bodies maybe requires a different dose to get the the effect that mm -hmm. you want to have out of it and then, and now with the technology and the, and that we can now you know determine exactly how many milligrams will work for you maybe i only need two milligrams and you may need 130 milligrams right. you know so but you can get that dosage you know the science is there the 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 uh, ability to tell you, oh, you've got a thousand milligrams in this bottle. Yeah. If you, you take, know exactly you, you know exactly into. what you're going to need to take. And mm -hmm. that's exciting, you know. But you really don't know your own, like you're saying, your, your own endocannabinoid system, everyone's system is different. So you don't know, like my last guest is probably 90 pounds soaking wet. She's like four foot 10 comedian, eco comic. And one five, five milligram uh, THC gummy made her hallucinate. Right. <laughs> right. So right. like, you never know, like you could be huge and still not, just take a little bit of CBD and it would work right. for you. You don't know until you try it. So we always say like, start low, titrate up until you find yeah. your like exact level. Right. If you go a little past it, you're not gonna, you know, you're just wasting money. So just back it off. And then once you've got the level. I mean, it's then. funny, just mention money as well. One of the things that I really want to do is, is have this like sensibly priced because I see some of the prices in the UK, uh, they were 250 pounds. If you can do CBD for, for 1999. No, I, I, I don't think I want to <laughs> do easy payments. Easy payments of 999, but I would, you know, I see, I see some of the prices and I know now with the, the genetics that we have and what we put into it. And obviously there's costs associated with, with extracting it. But I think that it would be nice to make a, a, a great product at a sensible price that's affordable um, and, and make it accessible and make sure that when people are getting it, that they understand that they're getting. And I think one of the one of the greatest things, one of the things I think we're going to be the most proud of is the fact that we will be able to tell the story of our genetics. We did it. We That's did awesome. it by hand. This finger did about <laughs> 15, 20,000. Wow. We did about, you know, I mean, it's, we Your planted pinky, a little pinky dipping We the did holes. them by hand. We wow. planted them in 36 count trays. They, they popped up, you know, they're the size of a little tiny, you know, and we, when they were about 10 and 12 inches tall, we put them in, we named each of our meadows. We know where the genetics were. We know what date they were taken out. We know wh when they, when the, each one was, uh, they're like your little babies. Going they're the, definitely, they're, they're, I think the saddest day this year, I did not want it to end. <laughs> I would have been, if we could have frozen time at about the end of labor day, <laughs> uh -huh. it was beautiful. It was oh, a 72 wow. and sunny. I'm sitting in my airstream and I get this waft of, of hemp dr like drifting up them. I'm like, this is it. The, now, if you went up there, it's like nothing ever happened. It's the saddest <laughs> thing ever. Um, it's waiting for the next Having bags. to cut them down was just oh, like yeah. brutal. But How we, thick were the stalks and everything? Was um, some of them were four or five inches wow. in diameter. So yeah. those are trees. Oh, yeah. trees, yeah. for sure. Yeah, they would. It was a, what, that, what that plant does in 90 days is incredible. It's amazing. I mean, it they is went incredible. In, I mean, I, I got to figure it's 120 probably from, mm -hmm. from the minute they sprout to when we pull them out, it's about 120 days. Mm -hmm. But from um, when, you know, you put them in the ground and they're these little spindly, you know, they're never going to survive. You know, <laughs> never going to survive the wind. I mean, right. have these big mountain, you know, afternoon breezes blow through in between thunderstorms, and on the, and they'd all, you know, scary. For the yeah, pretty much all of them sure. survived. Yeah, that's crazy. You start them in the greenhouse. Yep, correct. Jim and they did them in the greenhouse. We did two greenhouses. Uh, and Dave, uh, um, we had a couple close calls with a little too much humidity, right? Mm -hmm, but you managed. Mm -hmm. uh, we fixed That's that right. with a little neem oil. <laughs> um, I got a, a frantic phone call. They, they, we're gonna lose the crop. Oh no! Too much humidity. Oh, but we, we used a little neem to mitigate that. What's uh, neem? Neem oil is just a. It's an organic uh, oil that comes from the neem plant. You can uh, treat. Um, it's an antifungal. Oh, okay. uh, so. If you have too much humidity in your uh, greenhouse and you start to see rust, which is like an orange fungus that will grow on, and for us it was happening on the emerging seedlings, mm. 
So I saw some of it, you know, some small signs. I would I would walk the greenhouses, you know, every day and every night. And it was amazing to watch them, you know, go through that life cycle as they grow and sprout and grow right. the, the le- their, their emerging leaves. He's like, he literally, you know, like mom sleeps with baby monitor. Yeah. His baby monitor was a relative <laughs> humidity. I had to, he'd, he'd sleep each night you know, with great. this and be going out checking the, the relative humidity. Well, because humidity. We, we, we germinated in you know, it was hailing outside and snowing. You know, we built the greenhouses in what they call their mud season in Vermont, but there was snow still coming down. So the temperature had to be, we had to keep the temperature in the greenhouses up. And so nonetheless, I thought I was doing a great job creating like this rainforest type environment in there. It was literally raining from the top. The, 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 the condensation was raining on the seedlings. Cool. And I was like, look what I've done. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> I've created I, I, life. Look what I've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, you know, I, too much humidity is a bad thing, you know, for uh, for, you know, it allows funguses to take hold. And so rust is a fungus that will attack uh, the cannabis plant and you'll see it in. Uh, he called me frantic. Little tiny orange spots. He's and like, he's like, I, I, I can imagine tell you something. No, he's like, it's all good, though. Everything's good. I solved it. I like, bought every neem, the bottle of neem oil in the whole state of nice. Vermont and yeah. treated it. And it's all it's all good. But they, they're they're hardy plants. They're tough. They are hardy yeah. plants. Um, it's amazing the, the, the wind, the, the the even towards the end of the harvest. We had a couple uh, days of frost. We went early. We harvested early, which I'm super happy. There's still farmers up there right now harvesting as we speak. Nice. And mm. I wish them luck. But I would, I'm glad that we're out of the ground. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the amount of sweat equity you put into that is insane. Like it was a whole year. Die, but no, I think no. it's you know it's it's look. I think there's a lot of people who have this fantasy, right? Of you know I'm gonna I'm gonna trade it all in. I'm gonna start till the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till the like land. Thanos but, at the yeah, end yeah, of the. Yeah. We the can report back war. that farming is a <laughs> difficult profession. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stick you with your day job. Yeah. It's well, tough. you're like one of the only celebrities that have done this. I'm probably the only. So I, I when you guys talk about having a reality show about this. For me, I mean, I'm a little biased, but I would love to watch that reality show. Well, it was, I think it's going to be, we, I think we have it all. We got, you know, we have high stakes, right? Because there was a, if you put money on us at the beginning of the year, you would have bet against us. You know, there's no way these two are going to pull this off. It's fish out of water. Neither of us mm-hmm. knew, you know, it, both of us knew how to suffer from our, uh, our ex- expedition racing background. Right. But, you know, <laughs> so it was fish out of water, you know, Philadelphia from the city, you know, successful business. And I'm down in Florida, like, oh, they're going to go up there and try this. <laughs> um, high stakes. Obviously, there's, there's a lot on the line. Um, and then, you know, I think that this, this, the farming component itself, I think there's, there's a, people have this idea of, oh, we're going to go try farming. And then you add in the, the, I think the fascination around the, the, the cannabis plant and the unknowns and people are fascinated by it. And yeah. then the, but the wait, green yeah, rush. And then, but wait, there's yeah. more, um, there's an eight year old little girl who's kind of motivated exactly. these two lunatics to go up and do this. So. The boys have been filming. They got they got tears. They got joy. They got <laughs> laughter. We got a couple, uh, you know, late night campfire parties, um, flipping over equipment, getting tractors stuck, almost losing the crop a couple times. I mean, we we, we I think we have, we've got it all. So they're back in L.A. actually awesome. editing as we speak. So. And you're putting a friendly face on this cannabis plant that's so scary to so many people and showing that this is not something to fear. This is something that actually is helping there's my daughter. A, yeah, there's a you huge know, educational component yeah, to it. I mean, yeah. the misconceptions about the plant are massive. I mean, But I get it though. I, I understand it because, you know, the war on drugs has done a tremendous job of demonizing mm-hmm. this plant. And if you put a hemp plant in a lineup, we're growing exactly. next to a full THC. Low, they you c- could not tell the difference <laughs> if you put him in the lineup. We're gonna go right. Which one? Right. They. It looks like weed. It smells like weed. It feels like weed. It. It, it tastes it, like it weed. Tastes like weed. It, it's. Yeah. I mean, they almost look identical. So I could. I can completely understand. You know, um, twelve months ago, even today, if you had that in your car, a bag of that, you get arrested. It, it's um, when I went after my when my father died. I went straight from the farm to the plane in my farm clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the plane. I'm like, someone's got some weed on this plane. And I'm like, shit, it's me. <laughs> You're humming with it. I am like my boots on. And I'm like, I smell weed. And I'm like, oh, it's me. It's in my laces. Um, but it's yeah. I, so I I understand that. I, I get the um, the confusion. I get the it's been demonized. You know, reefer madness for for how many how many years? So yeah, um, and there's a lot of money saying that it's bad. You know, there's a lot of money for so many years trying to say that like these drugs are good, these drugs are bad. Like, yeah, one one hundred percent. So you know, um, I I've got a very very personal story here, and I think by doing it the hard way, uh, I don't want to say we put our ten thousand hours in, although we may have. 
We have an um, intimate relationship put, with the planet. Combined, we, we put uh, yeah, we put uh, you know, ten thousand hours in this year, if if you will, to, for lack of a better, you know, to say right, we we didn't just uh, we didn't just do this to slap on, slap my name on a bottle or my right. daughter's name on a bottle and, and do this. Uh, we, we wanted to we wanted to do it the hard way, and I would do it all over again. Absolutely. I don't know if you're going to go for it. You're going to, you're <laughs> going to do it all over again next year, right? Yeah, we are. Yeah, 100%. And it will be, um, I think, we'll, we'll go bigger. Um, I don't think we'll go that much bigger, but I, I, I'm looking forward to knowing how to drive a tractor <laughs> and, and knowing how to use a plastic layer and how to plastic removal and how to use Everything. a water wheel and, and, right. and looking so forward much to just n- second time around, right? <laughs> in this podcast, live stream, video, audio presentation, or YouTube video, or its related social media pages or interactions are for informational purposes only. CBD Source Center and the CBD Source Podcast does not offer medical advice. Its host, Cole Cheney, is not a medical professional. His experiences with cannabidiol and other cannabinoids are his own and may not affect you the same way. Everybody's endocannabinoid system is different. Statements made regarding CBD and THC products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The efficacy of these products and the testimonials made have not been confirmed by FDA-approved research. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All information presented here is not meant as a substitute for, or alternative to, information from healthcare practitioners. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act requires this notice. You know me from OxyClean, you know me from <laughs> right. selling steam mops. Um, exactly. All of a sudden, I've jumped into CBD. 